Good morning, everyone. It's Laxer again. And first of all, I wanted to say we heard the other day that there is be there will be a quality of life blog post coming, like with quality of life changes to last epoch very soon. We don't know an exact date, but I guess somewhere in the next days. And maybe one, two, or three days before the ninth, before the patch actually launches, we will get our patch notes. That means the patch notes I will definitely be streaming probably for like hours just going over the patch notes and fury crafting on Twitch and YouTube and the quality of life depending on how big that is um, we do a whole stream of it or we just keep playing whatever it is but definitely we'll also make videos about it just so you know the next days we will come back to Last Epoch because I know I've been streaming Diablo 4 a lot recently but we will come back to Last Epoch very very soon very soon also um, this was an interesting stream. I have a bunch, uh, like two new leaks in this one, and I will also go over the Tavern Talk where he was with uh, DM and Gazzy because he also leaked a new item. So I'm going to show this all to you today. And yeah, that's it. So let's just dive right into it with the first question that Mike got, which is an inter interesting one. Hello, Mike. Hello. McMac Twi Twitch. There we go. We got it. Uh, I think people go for ward instead of life is not only because ward is OP, but also because without ward we feel very squishy. Easily die from one shots. I, I, I mean, um, like a, a thousand HP versus a thousand ward. Uh, a thousand HP will protect you against one shots better than a thousand ward will. So, um, this going on. Um, are you dev satisfied with this balance, or do you plan to improve the player survivability in general? I mean, the, I think survivability in general is going down overall um, because Ward's getting a lot of nerfs. So, uh so there were actually two questions, but I wanted to put it into one because it was pretty much covering the same topic. The first one was interesting because I don't know if people are actually aware of this, but it's true. A thousand HP helps you to survive one shots better than a thousand Ward for the simple reason that with HP, you have your endurance at the bottom, right? For example. That sort of um, lowers your dam the damage you take, whereas with Ward, you do not, right? The key thing why people go for Ward is simply because you can generate much more Ward currently than you can have health. But they said before that they're working on health um, and they will be nerfing Ward, which is what he said in the second part of this, that survivability will be going down. And this is going to piss off a lot of people. I know that because in the other videos I made people always... <laughs> are mad about the fact that they will be nerfing OP builds down to like 300 corruption level or maybe 500 and people say they should actually be buffing all the other ones so you can go to 1k again I'm gonna repeat myself this is dumb for the game and also for the players because it's an absolute waste of time to grind corruption it takes so long to get to 1k corruption or even 2k and there's just no point in it you don't even get better items like slightly better, but the, the bonus you get from it is kind of pointless. So it's interesting though to know with 1.1, the survivability of all your characters, or not all your characters, but all of them using ward will be going down. Okay, they will die easier. They will make the game harder, which I think is good, right? Because we are looking here, you gotta remember the guys. They, uh, the idea for Last Epoch was to make a successor for Diablo 2. And Diablo 2 was hard, right? It was tough. So the idea is to make this game not easy. So you actually have a challenge. And this will especially come with the pinnacle bosses, but also with survivability being nerfed. And you're not really being able to like easily one-shot bosses anymore because they get the world um, thresholds as well. You get the idea. Just so you know, Health technically helps you to survive better, but you can just generate more ward right now, but this will most likely be going down. We'll see if I can actually run my, my Blood Warlock build in 1.1 as I intended. Um, if they never roll too hard, then probably not. What is your personal opinion on object objective, I assume rushing, uh, in Last Epoch currently? Um, I mean, I think it's a natural byproduct of an ARPG where you give a fixed uh, reward for an objective. That someone wants like they're gonna try and complete that objective as fast as possible um, so you know I, I think it's I think it makes total sense um, 
I think that we need more reasons for people to uh, to to not rush that as fast as possible. Um, I think the way to do that is is something that we're doing um, maybe a little bit slowly, but we are doing, and I think it's gonna. Um, I, I think it's a very fine line of balance between there's nowhere near enough stuff to do and just rush objectives and search every echo for as many of these things as possible. Um, and I think there's like a there's a tipping point that happens where you add one more thing and suddenly it just flips completely. Um, and I think there's a few little other strategies we can employ that we've we've talked about um, that we're looking at doing to to make it get to as close to the center point without flipping completely. Um, you know, I think a, a, a healthy place to be would be um, if, like, like if if someone's if the new player is like, hey, what should I do? What's the optimal strategy? Should I rush objective or should I search the echo? And I think in in a perfect world, the answer to that question when someone comes to the forum new, the the answer is, well, it's most optimal to do one of like to A or B, pick whichever one's most optimal. Like one slightly better than the other one, but really, if you enjoy doing one, just do it because it's not that big of a deal. Like that would be a that would be a yeah we nailed it type answer. Because one of them's always going to be a little bit better than the other, um, but having reasons to explore I think is really good. Um, and things like the Exile Mages and the Nemesis systems and some of the other systems we've announced in the in the um, roadmap as well are going to really help um, give players a reason to explore Echoes a little bit more. But not necessarily. We we don't we don't we don't really want people to get to the point where they like they feel like they have to full clear everyone because we don't think that's really funny either. But having it be where, um, hey, there's a pack of mobs. I'm gonna go kill it um, while I get to the objective. And hey, there's this like side event thing that I can go do while I'm getting to the objective. And, and having those things be interesting and and people have actual reason to go do them is really good. Um, he was talking a lot there, I know, but I want to keep give you the, the whole sort of thought pro process of his. So to summarize it, it's pretty much because right now, as you know, the best way to go through the monoliths or to through the echoes rather is to not even care about stability or any shit on the map. You just go straight to the objective. You kill mobs on the on the way there because you have to kill some of them to even get to the back at the end objective of the echo and just go to the next because stability is pointless. It doesn't really help much in your echoes anyway because you want to get the rewards you gain from any echo right and so they are trying to find a balance between this not happening like cl actually clearing echoes more so i should say and instead of just rushing for the objective now generally of course this is a good idea right because you want to actually play through these things but as it is right now i think in the current state of the game this is bad because as long as they don't actually give us the ability to go straight to the empowered monoliths. If you want, you can think of the world tier in Diablo 4, right? If they don't give us the ability to directly increase difficulty and corruption just like that, then this sucks. Because if I actually have to play through unempowered monoliths with my overpowered build, more so just to get to the end of it, then I'm going to lose my shit. Okay, because this is already annoying as hell with a new character to go through the unempowered monoliths once, all through them, through all of them. You have to do it before you get to the empowered ones, which is where the fun actually starts, because then this is where you get proper items and there's actually some difficulty. If you don't give me this ability, then I'm going to be pissed. And I think this is bad for the game, because... And he said it before himself, that going through the unempowered monoliths is annoying and tedious with your overpowered build. Like, not even with an overpower, just with a strong build. And they're looking for ways into doing this. Now, we gained that glyph of... the green glyph, I forgot the name of it, the new glyph, where you can actually get corruption faster. But you still have to find this glyph first, which you do not find before corruption level 100. So for new characters, this doesn't even apply. And you have to play a little bit to even get there. So I don't like the system with the glyph. I think that it's just... Should, what's the problem with just giving us the ability... Once you get to the end of time, you can just go straight to Empowered Monoliths. Like, you can choose the royalty in Diablo 4. Why is that not a thing? What's what's stopping them from doing this? I have no reason to go through the Unempowered Monoliths at all. I don't know why. It's just, uh, just odd to me, but whatever. That's that's what they're doing. What's your cycle starter, Mike? Ooh, um... 
I don't know. Usually, I just like the last few. I've just been like, whatever class is the newest. But there's no new classes. So, uh, what did I say? I'm doing. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a different beast match than the one I'm playing right now. But kind of similar at the same time. Uh, Ichi does an amazing job. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, question, can we expect any fun primalist changes or uniques in this update is my favorite class? Well, now that you mention it, <laughs> um, I, 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 so I do have, yeah. So he keeps talking a little bit about that, but I found, I found it interesting that he's actually going to go for the Beastmaster. This was actually the last class I was expecting to get huge buffs, um, for... 1.1 but he's going for it because there's apparently a really cool unique now now we only about this ring we only know how it looks he didn't say anything about it it is apparently unique that makes sense with the beast mess or the primalist he said i think um so whatever the hell that could be it looks fancy i gotta give him that but um, we don't know anything more about that so i'm just gonna glance over it and go to the next item there it is the world splitter a two-handed axe Melee damage, chance to bleed on melee hit. Melee void damage, increased area for melee area skills per one mana cost. Interesting how long does this last though? I guess just for that attack then, for mana cost. Interesting. Critical strike chance for melee attacks per mana cost. Crit strike multiplayer per 10 max mana. Increased mana region, increased mana. So that's interesting. This is a... Sort of a melee caster thing. This could be good for like the spellblade, I guess, right? Um, it seems like that is what it's really aimed towards. Maybe we could also use this in some sort of Void Knight, maybe? Even though he doesn't have much mana. Tough to say right now because it also has bleed on hit, right? Um, interesting though. Maybe we get... I would like this in some sort of melee harvest... Void Warlock dot bleed thing. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, I doubt it. But maybe. Who knows? So, interesting. It's level 85, so you're going to get this very late. Um, it's a, it looks very interesting, though. Very interesting item. Then this one is from the Tavern Talk. It's actually from Aaron, as you can see in the bottom right. Um, oh, shit. I got to remove. Um, I got to move myself. Otherwise, you can't see. Actually, let me... Let me do it like this. Maybe... Yeah, Aaron, I know, thank you. So this is Pelaris' Sacred Light. Again, I use this from, from Aaron's uh, nice still here, by the way, also. Definitely subscribe to this lad, um, because I found it in, on his video. But this was from the Tavern Talk um, dev stream with Mike again, Gazzy, and you can't see him, but Dol Dolph Microtransaction is actually his video. Another unique we will get. The, the key thing about this one is it's level 6. So this is an early... Like you can run this on all your alt characters. If you got some LP on it, you can have some some early fun with it. It looks huge, but it's actually a one-handed sword, meaning you can dual wield it on your characters. Um, one melee damage per two attunement. One spell damage per two strength. So this looks a lot like a um, primalist. Maybe a primalist melee build actually does shit. It says smite, but attunement and strength is pretty pretty nice for the primalist as well. Uh, with Smite, of course, it's also focused, obviously, on the Sentinel. That's its main idea. But I was thinking of, I want a Primalist melee build for so long that actually does something. Um, maybe we can use that for that, even though we, we lose the Smite thingy. But I kind of like the other buffs, especially like early game. Maybe. We'll see. But it looks like a Smite thingy, for sure. Cast Smite on melee hit. Up to three times per second. I mean, the 40% chance is pretty good. Chance to cast Smite at two additional targets when you cast it directly. So you have the bonus. This is actually great. You have the melee hit bonus and you have the direct cast bonus. I'm not a fan of actively casting these things. I've never was. I'm a lazy, lazy bad, lazy man. Uh, I just want to have these things auto cast. That's my shtick with Lassie Pog always. But getting giving you some sort of bonus if you do it while having a melee thing, I guess that's cool. We can live with that. That's totally fine. So that was it for this uh, week's death stream. There wasn't actually as much as I thought it would be. Just two two leaks and a little bit of talk um, about the topics we mentioned, like ward and survivability. So it's not that crazy. It's kind of weird. I thought there would be more in this, but maybe um, he, he's keeping all that for the upcoming blog posts that will be coming this week, actually. Next few days, it's already the third 
So um, just six days until 1.1 launches. And there is a lot more info to come out, I feel like. We'll see. The next one apparently is going to be the quality of life blog post with changes to that. We'll see what's coming from this. And then obviously the patch notes before the patch happens. So there's going to be a lot of theory crafting over the next few days or the, the coming week, I should say. And then 1.1, we're going to go hard. I will not be playing Legacy. I will start a new cycle character completely from scratch because I want to get to the Pinnacle Boss. I don't think personally that I can do it right away because some other people have way more times on their, uh, time on their hands to actually rush to the boss right away. I'm thinking of Rex here, for example. Hello, friend. <laughs> He's probably going to no-life this until he gets to the Pinnacle Boss. Um... I most likely won't be able to do it. I still want to get to the boss on the new cycle first to get the whole experience first. And then we're going to make some new builds in this little legacy with our, our OP characters. Until then, I wish you all a good time. Have fun playing Last Epoch. I will be streaming maybe, like today we'll be streaming more Diablo 4 and then we're going to get back to Last Epoch. See you around, gentlemen.